Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're here at the D'Angelo Marine Fabrication Shop. I'm inside a big 90 that's going on a freaking ship for the Coast Guard, right? That is correct. It's a freaking exhaust? Yeah, it is, my friend. We're here with Stan, the stainless man, and we're gonna do an episode today on welding thick to thin. Let's do it. So here at D'Angelo's, there's welders out here. I mean, you can hear them. They're just getting after it welding. A lot of this marine equipment found a lot here in the east coast of Florida, right? Probably 98% marine down here. You got a 26 inch slip-on flange. It's like three quarters of an inch thick and you're welding it to this sheet metal skin, this 90 that y'all kind of pie cut together out of 11, 12 gauge sheet metal. Yeah, I'd say 11 gauge, um, three 21 stainless. So you got 321 stainless, you're welding with what wire? 347 filler. 100% argon gas, so nothing crazy. It doesn't need a purge because we're not getting outside of any of those. We're not getting all the way through it. What is your technique when you're welding something so thick to something so thin? Uh, it's more of a wash kind of technique. Yeah. With something, the difference between these thicknesses here, obviously we're gonna hold our heat on this heavier steel here and just kind of wash it on to our thinner gauge. Yeah, so you sit on this most of the time and you just kind of Let's put a hood on, let's see you get after it. Let's rock and roll, boys. Now you're freehanding this. Is that your preferred method is freehanding it? My Yes, my, my personal go-to is freehand for something like this. It's just what I've always been taught, more or less. Compared to the outside where you got two spots to kind of wiggle or roll on, you really don't have that luxury here. Not at all. You need to be able to have a little bit of freedom here, hence freehand. Give you a little bit of room for play. You could easily go to the other side of this and start welding uphill, but you think it'd be tougher because of the thinner metal? 100%, yeah. And a lot of times people are told not to, not to weld downhill now. Obviously, gravity is usually against you. Now, if you can learn to use gravity to your favor, then um, you can rock and roll with it. With this thinner material, welding downhill, it's gonna tie in, it's gonna it's gonna penetrate, it's gonna fuse, it's freaking thin. I noticed you're keeping that filler right next to that, that sheet metal. Yeah, so I keep it butted up. Basically, what it's doing is I lock it up against that sheet metal there, that 11 gauge, and that's just keeping any kind of loose wiggle out of that rod or anything. I kind of lock it in there. And not to mention, that's where I'm gonna have to wash that filler onto and be more careful without blowing through. It gives me a little more control with the filler. You do not want that puddle to roll over that edge, right? Correct. And then you'll get all that undercut and you damage the flange. Yes, now again, do I have to go all the way to the edge? No, I do it for more or less cosmetic and it makes it look a hell of a lot cleaner. So the weld doesn't call for a, necessarily a weave right there. There's no specification on what's needed, but maybe a minimum. But aesthetically, it's looking really nice, man. And like painting a picture, man, nice and smooth. A steady pace wins this race. When we welded the outside of it, if you guys don't know, we have another video of welding the outside of this where Stan goes up against the robot. When we were welding the outside, you were at 150 amps. Why did you switch up to 130? Well, one, I'm running downhill. So if it's too hot, gravity's gonna take over and run her on me. If gravity takes over and you let that puddle run and roll, then you get that lack of fusion, yeah. right? Just If it's hotter, doesn't mean it's gonna fuse in if you're running down and then it drips or rolls. You gotta have a lot of control when you're going downhill with it. There's always that perfect amperage, whether you're stick welding, MIG welding. There's gonna be a parameter where within five or 10 amps, the idea is to slowly dial it in to find that perfect amperage. So let's roll it a little bit. Yeah, right, right there. That's good. Now you got like probably a hundred and some odd inches to weld right here. As a welding instructor at a welding school for several years, I, I noticed students on a little bit of a trend. They tend to think that that eight inch coupon is, is a lot of welding. They sometimes take up to five hours to weld eight, 16 inches of a coupon. What is your advice to someone who's in school that is used to welding eight inches at a time and what they should expect when they get out there in the real world. When it comes to welding, man, it's all about timing. You want to be the best. Not only do you need to lay down the nicest weeds, but you got to be the fastest. So like anything, time is money. The more you weld, the faster you're going to be able to get, and the more welds you're going to be able to get done in that amount of time. A hundred percent. And I'd seen students that would weld, you know, a coupon or two, and like, oh, I'm going to let it cool. And, and that's cool for while you're in school, but you really need to be buckled down at that, that short amount of time while you're in welding school, welding as much as you can, because when you get out there, you're gonna get as much as you want. 
And that is correct. What's your method to your madness? Well, like I said earlier, is, uh, I love freehanding personally. When I was younger, my father taught me you're not always going to be able to walk the cup. If you're in a pipe rack or something, you know, some chemical plant on a tie-in, a lot of times you're not going to be able to walk the cup. The idea was to get better at freehand, and then everything else comes after. I like to angle it a little bit as far as on my freehand. Yeah, you've got a lot of lean back there. Yeah, what that's doing is it's preheating the metal in front of me. So when I do a lay wire technique, that metal's already preheated in the front, which is allowing it to run nice and smooth. You know, it almost is like the same torch angle as a, a cup walk, but you're not walking the cup. You're freehanding it. But I would 100% agree with you when it comes to freehanding versus walking the cup in a real application, a lot of times walking the cup is just too difficult. My least favorite welds is the 2G when you're walking the cup because you got to sit there and just work that arm, that shoulder gets worn out. And it's much easier instead of doing this to just do this. Absolutely. When I freehand, I like to rest the cup. So I'm, I'm either dragging it or I'm bumping it. That is allowing my brain to concentrate 100% on the puddle. So now there's no shake in that cup. And since I'm doing a lay wire technique, there's no shake in that filler wire. They're both set at a fixed point. So now I can focus 100% on where I'm moving that puddle. All right, I'm getting itchy. I want to weld. Let's see what you made of. Holy mac and cheese, man. My hand is on fire. I'm seeing some issues though, like my wire, I wanna, it seems to wanna stay in the middle. I need to remind myself to keep it bumped up to that edge. Even if it's like where it's at right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes this wanna run away from me. I'm just putting enough filler on that corner end, then I can just wash it out. Because if you don't dump enough filler in there, when you go to wash it to the end here, it's gonna undercut. How are you not burning up your hands? I got soft hands, dude. I know, you don't weld no more like I do, man. <laughs> Really trying to keep my wire off in that corner now. And when I get to the edge of the flange, I'm looking to just bump it. My wire wants to keep going to the center. Maybe I change my wire angle. There we go. I noticed something that helped me out immensely, and it was real simple. I went from keeping my wire like this. This is where my hand was. Yeah, to so this. this. Oh, yeah. So if I change my wire angle, that wire runs with the line of the sheet steel instead of away from it. Somebody's got some hands on them, boy. Look at that. So I'm not going to lie, man. I'm more of a, a cup walker myself. I'm going to walk the dog on it. You're going to try to walk it on that? Yeah. This is more my speed, but I'm not going to lie, this is more work. The biggest thing to walk in the cup is you have to tell yourself to relax your hand. Yeah, you got to have just the right pressure. At first you almost want to like push down too hard and then you realize, okay, I got to loosen up a little bit. Just make it harder for yourself, but then you get fatigued a lot quicker. I always tell people, when in doubt, peek you out, take your pinky off that torch, and it'll make it harder for you to death grip it. Or, or I'll tell them that they need to put that pinky underneath their torch like this while they're welding. So when they do walk, they crush their pinky and it hurts. Yeah. It'll remind you don't squeeze your torch so much. I'm much more into the walk the cup method here. It's a little bit tighter than these weeks. And I will say that it is more of a workout. Here's the thing about the way I weld. If you're trying to freehand it like this, you got too much to think about. You're trying to control this hand, this, your foot pedal. With this resting here, that takes all shake or anything out of this. That's a fixed point now. So now you ain't even got to think about trying to balance that hand, right? Yeah. That's what I was struggling with. I was burning up my hand and you were just, you're welding the whole thing exactly. without stopping. Exactly. Also, if the piece is roasting hot, I don't have to touch it, right? The cup's sitting on it and no filler wire is going to sit on it. Again, fixed point, fixed point. It's set. So now I can put all my brain energy in it concentrating on where that puddle's going to go. Edge control. Where you were like to do the downhill Freehand, I think I like to do more of the uphill walk the cup. Because I can't really walk like this, but this is like, for me, this this feels right. 
That's but imagine if you did that like on two of these back to back, you'd be done. I'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah I quit. <laughs> but I'm gonna do it. I'm stubborn anyway. I see everyone in this shop got a big office chair in their bay because they're just trying to do it the, the easiest way they can. It's not lazy. Why work harder when work smarter? Absolutely. And I, I get that a lot on social media. You know, that's cheating and it's resting your cup. And ain't nothing cheating about it, man. If it's easier, then of course I'm going to do it. If I can get a better weld and more consistent weld in doing it the way I do it, then, and then absolutely it's going down that way. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat, as they say, and there is more than a way to make a weld. Ooh. And it was going so good. Knock that tungsten out. But my walk looks better than my freehand. I mean, I just can be more consistent with my walk. But I do like the edge on yours. It seems to be a little cleaner. And I got like these little boop, 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 boop. Hey, here's a little tighter. What it comes down to, guys, is no matter what you're welding, thick or thin, whether you like to freehand it, or you like to walk the cup, it's for everybody, man. Thanks for letting us come out to D'Angelo's and weld with you, my dude. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely, my friend. We'll see you guys on the next one.